Starship with humanoid robot to leave for Mars in 2026. Human landings by 2029. Elon Musk's SpaceX founder Elon Musk announced Friday that the company's massive Starship rocket is set to depart from Mars at the end of 2026, carrying Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus. In a post on X, he added that human landings on Mars could start as early as 2029 if the initial missions succeed, though 2031 remains a more probable timeline. Starship departs for Mars at the end of next year, carrying Optimus. If those landings go well, then human landings may start as soon as 2029, although 2031 is more likely, wrote Musk in a post on X. Optimus robots set for Mars mission. Musk has stated that the upcoming Mars mission will carry Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus, which was revealed to the public last year. He also mentioned that the robot would eventually be capable of performing everyday tasks, with a cost ranging between $20,000 and $30,000. Eleven months ago, the billionaire claimed that Optimus robots could become Tesla's most valuable asset, while also revealing the anticipated release date. Musk emphasized the financial potential, suggesting that Optimus could surpass all of Tesla's other ventures in value. Optimus stands 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs 125 pounds. Its human-like design uses lightweight, durable materials for flexibility and efficiency. The 2.3-kilowatt-hour battery, managed by Tesla's system, supports extended operation for both light and heavy tasks. With 40 electromechanical actuators, Optimus has a human-like range of motion, allowing it to walk on two legs and handle objects precisely. The robot moves at speeds up to 5 miles per hour and can carry up to 45 pounds, making it suitable for a variety of tasks. Starship's role in making space travel reusable and cost-effective. Standing at 403 feet tall, Starship is the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built and a cornerstone of Elon Musk's plan to colonize Mars. Designed for full reusability, the rocket is built for deep space exploration and is expected to enable missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, making space travel more cost-effective and efficient. NASA is also counting on a modified version of Starship as a lunar lander for its Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the Moon this decade. Before SpaceX can launch deep space missions, though, it must prove Starship is reliable, safe, and capable of in-orbit refueling. The rocket has undergone multiple test flights with both failures and milestones, including reaching space. Still, SpaceX's fail-fast, learn-fast approach has made it the world's leading launch provider. Musk has long set his sights on a trip to Mars, and in 2016, he announced plans to send his Dragon spacecraft as early as 2018. By 2020, the billionaire remained confident that SpaceX would land humans on Mars within six years. According to several news reports, Musk's dream of transporting humans to Mars also became a greater national priority under U.S. President Donald Trump. Sources indicated that Musk's push for reforms within the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, the U.S. space and aviation regulator, could support his Mars ambitions. Musk has often clashed with the FAA, arguing that excessive regulations on safety and environmental grounds have slowed Starship's development. In his January inauguration speech, Trump also pledged to plant the stars and stripes on the planet Mars. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has reaffirmed the company's commitment to sending its Starship spacecraft to Mars by late 2026, carrying Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus. This ambitious timeline, aiming for human arrival on Mars as early as 2029, though 2031 is more likely, underscores SpaceX's long-term vision for establishing a self-sustaining human presence on the Red Planet. This ambitious goal reflects a significant commitment to developing a multi-planetary civilization. Musk's public statements on the subject reinforce the project's importance and the potential for a significant step in human history. This mission is not just about reaching another planet, but also setting the stage for a new era of human expansion. The announcement is a powerful statement about SpaceX's long-term goals for the future of space exploration. SpaceX's Starship, the world's most powerful launch vehicle, is a crucial component of Musk's Mars colonization plan. Its massive payload capacity, exceeding that of previous rockets, 
allows for the transport of significant amounts of cargo needed for a Martian settlement. The reusable nature of the vehicle is crucial for lowering the cost of future missions. The vehicle's ability to transport a large quantity of materials to Mars is paramount for creating and sustaining a human settlement on another planet. The sheer scale of this project necessitates a vehicle capable of carrying large payloads. This section emphasizes the importance of Starship's power and reusability in facilitating the logistical demands of a Mars mission. Musk's long-term vision for Mars colonization aims to create a self-sufficient human colony as a safeguard against potential existential threats on Earth. He envisions this colony as a backup plan for humanity. This ambitious goal highlights the crucial role of space exploration in ensuring the long-term survival of our species. Musk's previous statements and recent confirmation of the 2026 launch date reinforce the profound commitment to this multi-planetary future. This section emphasizes the philosophical underpinnings of Musk's plans, highlighting the notion of human redundancy as a key motivator for this space exploration endeavor. The idea of a backup for humanity is central to understanding the rationale for his Mars colonization plan. Despite Musk's confidence, SpaceX's Starship development has faced significant setbacks. Recent failures, including explosions shortly after launch, underscore the complexities of building such a massive and sophisticated spacecraft. These setbacks are not uncommon in complex engineering projects, especially in the pioneering stage of a new technology. These challenges reflect the immense technical hurdles involved in developing a fully reusable launch system capable of carrying substantial payloads. This section highlights the ongoing technical difficulties encountered by SpaceX, acknowledging the setbacks as a part of the development process and a necessary step towards solving complex problems and perfecting new technology. These repeated setbacks underscore the immense complexities of developing advanced spaceflight technology. Starship's development isn't solely focused on Mars colonization. It also impacts SpaceX's broader satellite launch business. The reusable design, crucial for cost effectiveness, directly benefits this sector. This broader application of Starship technology contributes to the business model and overall feasibility of the project. Musk's ambition to colonize Mars is intertwined with the development of a robust and cost-effective launch system. The article highlights how Starship's broader applications, particularly in the satellite launch sector, contribute to the project's economic viability and support its long-term goals. SpaceX's approach to integrating different projects and aims ties together the development of new technology for space travel and the broader scope of their business objectives. The contrast between China's and Musk's approaches to Mars colonization is stark. China emphasizes a methodical, data-driven approach, prioritizing robotic exploration and resource analysis. Musk's strategy is more ambitious, focusing on rapid deployment in a significant human presence. This difference in approach reflects varying philosophies and resource allocations. These contrasting strategies highlight the multifaceted challenges and diverse perspectives in pursuing Mars colonization. The section examines the contrasting methodologies employed by both nations in their respective space programs. The approaches highlight the wide range of strategic considerations for this monumental endeavor, preparing for SpaceX mission to Mars. SpaceX announced a plan for a bold, innovative, new approach to land a human crew on Mars. Unlike traditional space missions that minimize mass, the SpaceX approach utilizes many lower-cost launches to create a simplified, robust mission concept utilizing large amounts of mass. SpaceX claims it will land a crew on Mars in the next several years. A great deal of development and validation in situ of critical elements of the mission must be demonstrated prior to carrying out the mission. The in-situ production of 1,200 metric tons of cryogenic propellants and the entry, descent, and landing of a 200 metric ton vehicle represent the greatest challenges. Locating an accessible source of H2O at a suitable landing site will require a series of launches of prospecting missions at increasing resolution at 26-month launch intervals. The preparation for the ultimate SpaceX mission will require at least 10 years and most likely 20 years of development and demonstration at a cost of several tens of billions of dollars. It is not clear why SpaceX continues to make bold claims for timing that is not possible. In a series of internet postings over the past few years, 
SpaceX claimed they would implement a near-term human mission to Mars in the late 2020s. While the SpaceX vision for a human mission to Mars is replete with major challenges, the outline of the mission provides some valuable new insights and approaches. As pointed out by Rapp and originally by Jones, a major element of the traditional approach to designing space missions was to reduce mass in LEO. Thus, historically, the initial mass in LEO, I-M-L-E-O, was considered to be an indicator of mission cost and was an important factor to be minimized by clever design. With the great reduction in launch costs produced by SpaceX in recent years, reducing IMLEO no longer has great leverage. Instead, SpaceX apparently takes the opposite view and increases mass, hopefully at an acceptable cost, to simplify, reduce risk, and increase reliability. In this mission design, MLEO is less relevant. The SpaceX mission to Mars simplifies the mission by utilizing a single vehicle from LEO to the Mars surface and back to Earth using the same engines and propellants for all legs of the round-trip journey. The return flight goes directly from Mars to LEO without a rendezvous, as Zubrin suggested 30 years ago. However, only a few details of the mission were presented. The various posted details of the SpaceX mission were reviewed by Maywald, Idal, and by Rapp. These reviews discussed the challenges involved, and they concluded that the mission is unlikely to be feasible, as briefly described by SpaceX. Aside from several glossy brochures posted on the internet by SpaceX that contain limited descriptive data for the proposed SpaceX mission, the MyWald and RAP publications represent the only serious quantitative analyses of the mission feasibility. The lander proposed by SpaceX would have a landed mass of 200 metric tons, comprised of a 100 metric ton Starship and a 100 metric ton payload. That is 200 times greater than the largest payload so far landed on Mars. Exactly how such a behemoth would be landed on Mars remains difficult to comprehend. Assuming that it might eventually become technically feasible to precision land such a massive payload on Mars, a 20-year development and validation sequence would likely be required to establish the viability of this capability prior to carrying out a human mission to Mars. Furthermore, Mywald et al performed a detailed analysis of the SpaceX mission, and they estimated that the mass of the Starship would exceed the claim value of 100 metric tons by a considerable amount. A Starship that carries a crew of six requires 1,200 metric tons of propellants, and there are two crewed Starships, so the total propellant requirement on the Mars surface for the return trip from Mars is 2,400 metric tons. SpaceX proposes to produce this propellant load from indigenous Mars resources using ESRU that would entail finding a suitable source of H2O at a suitable landing site, which at best would be very challenging and at worst might not be possible. A search for suitable near-surface resources would be needed in preliminary exploratory missions. The process would have to be validated in situ on Mars. It seems likely that the landing site would be in an equatorial area where near-surface H2O has been detected from space in a few locations, most likely hydrated minerals. The program for prospecting and developing autonomous technology for obtaining water from regolith would be a lengthy, arduous process, entailing several major missions to the Mars surface spread over several 26-month launch opportunities.